Hello friends, we're going to start a new drawing today. So before we get into that drawing, we're going to start off the way we always do, by putting our first things first, discussing our elements of art, and in a moment, our principles of design. So please repeat these seven words after me. Line, shape, color, texture, form, space, value. So we're going to start off, like we always do, with some lines. We're going to use those lines to create shape. We're going to use a special line called a horizon line to help us create some space. We're going to, once we have all, that, all those lines laid down and drawn on the paper, we're going to use some color. And we're going to use that color to create some texture and to help us use all of our space. That being said, let's keep the conversation moving. To our principles of design. So again, please repeat these seven words after me. Balance. Unity. Pattern. Rhythm. Movement. Emphasis. Contrast. So in today's drawing, we're actually going to have quite a few of these principles of design working for us. Uh, first one we want to discuss is our emphasis, our main thing in the picture. Now, our book today was about snails. So what do you think our emphasis is going to be in this drawing? That's right. We're going to make a snail. Now, with that, we're also going to create some pattern. Remember that for something to be a pattern, it must repeat and continue on in the same order. But a pattern must repeat. And we're also going to create some movement. Now again, this is to, sh to try to show that something within our work is, is moving. Now with snails, snails don't move very quickly. So our movement is most likely going to feel like it's pretty slow. But that being said, let's keep our conversation moving. We got just one or two other words that we want to talk about before we get into the drawing. So let's talk about them. So we've really only got one of these that we want to mention today. And that is just to briefly take a second and review what a horizon line is and how a horizon line works. So if this is my drawing, this is my piece of paper, a horizon line will show us where the ground stops. So ground and where the sky starts. But we always do it like this, with just this one line. We don't ever, ever, ever want to draw you know, a line at the bottom and a line on top. Because then we have this big empty space in the middle of our paper that just flat out does not look good. So never like this, always like this. That being said, let's draw a snail. As always, when we start a new drawing, the first thing that we have to discuss and decide for ourselves is how to orient our paper. So again, when our paper is like this, we say that it is in landscape. If we turn it and have it like this in front of us, then we say that our paper is in portrait. For our drawing today, we want to work with our paper in landscape. So take a moment, make sure that you have your paper turned the same way I do. And the first thing we're gonna draw is our emphasis, our main most important thing. So with that emphasis, remember a couple of things. Number one, number one, first and foremost, most importantly, we want to make it big. Secondly, we want to put it close to the middle of our paper. So when we start on our emphasis, which is of course going to be a snail, we're going to start with his shell. It's the biggest part of the snail. Now to make the shell is super, super easy. We use one line and we use a spiral with that line. So we want to start at the middle, and we spiral out. I think that's a pretty good size. And then when we get to the end here, we're just going to put a curved line right there to close it out. And that, that's a snail shell. Super easy. Now, it also mentioned that the snail has something at the bottom of its body called a foot. So we're going to make the foot in some steps. Uh, we're going to start at the back of our shell with just kind of a straight line. Okay. 
From that straight line, we're going to use a curvy line, like, kind of like this. Something that's got a little bit of wave to it, got a little bit of movement to it. That creates the foot of our snail. That's the part that helps the snail move along. Now, we still need a head. So we're going to come from the bottom of our foot right here. We're going to come up. We're just going to put a little circle there, and we're going to come back to the bottom of our shell. Now, on that snail's face, sometimes in pictures it looks like snails have antenna, but what we see on top of their head, those are not antenna like you would have on a bee or on a fly. Those are actually what hold its eyes up. So we want to give our snail two eyes. We're going to use these two kind of short lines, and we put a little circle on top of it to make an eyeball. Snails have a mouth. We can just show that with a line. We, we don't have to be super crazy detailed about that. So this creates our emphasis. This is our snail. Now we got a few other things we want to draw, starting with our horizon line. Now we want our horizon line to be overlapped by our snail. We want our snail to be in front of our horizon. So we're going to come about halfway up his shell. Just put that line on this side and then I'm going to skip over my snail. Put my line on the other side. Now remember your line does not have to look the exact same as mine. It's okay if it doesn't look the same. Now let's talk about our movement. As snails move across the ground they ooze a slide. It makes the ground a little bit slippery. It makes it easier for them to move along. So we're going to create a slime trail. So we want to come from the front, and we just want to kind of make a shape. It doesn't have to be just like mine, just to show that this snail has been oozing his way along the ground. So at this point, we've got our main emphasis here. We've created some space. We've created some movement. My ooze tells me that my snail is going that way. Last thing we want to do is we want to add in something for our snails to eat. Now in the story it said that snails that live on the land eat plants, they eat fruits, they eat vegetables that they can find. So what I want you to do is I want you to add at least two plants into this picture for our snail to eat. They could be any kind of fruit or plant that you want, totally up to you. You can put them anywhere you want in the picture. Just make sure that the bottom of them is attached to the ground because as we know, plants and trees do not fly. So go ahead, pause the video, add in some of those details, and we'll come back and we'll talk about our color and pattern and textures in just a moment. So here's my drawing with my extra details that I've added. I added a large watermelon, in the background behind my snail, as well as a carrot that's just starting to poke up out of the ground. So at this point, we're, we're done with our drawing, we're done with our lines and our shapes and creating our space. It's time to move into some color and create some pattern and to use all of our space. So the pattern that we want to create is going to go on the shell of our snail. So we want to start at the end, and I'm going to use a curved line like this, but you can use any kind of line you want. So we're just going to add these lines, making sure that the lines we add touch on both sides. Keep coming around. All right. So from there, we're going to choose Two colors, it can be any two colors you want. I think I'm gonna pick purple and orange. And we're gonna repeat the order of these colors to create our pattern. Now remember, your pattern does not have to be the same as my pattern. So here we have our shell with this wonderful pattern. So the next thing we wanna do is color the snail's body itself. Now most snails, not all of them, but a lot of them are kind of a brownish, yellowish, greenish color. If you wanna do yours that way, you can, but you can make your, your snail's head and foot any color you wanna be. I think I'm gonna go though with that little kind of slightly more traditional mix of brown and yellow. 
So there we've got our snail's face and foot colored. Next thing we want to work on is this trail of slime that our snail is oozing out. This is what helps to show our movement, show which direction our snail is coming from. Now, what what do you think some good colors for the slime from our snail might be? Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah, I like all those ideas. Um, you make your slime for your snail any color you want. I want mine to look really, really gross. So I'm going to use a combination of green and yellow for mine. But again, you use whatever colors you want. So here, slime completed. Now the next thing we want to talk about is the ground. Because we're going to try to create some texture here when we do this ground. So what we want to do there is we want to start, and instead of coloring it back and forth solid, what we're going to do is we're going to use a zigzag line. Just zigging and zagging. And we're going to keep repeating that line across. Now, there's gonna, this is going to, doing it this way is going to leave some small areas of white showing. That's okay. We're going to fix that. We're going to fix that in, in just a minute. But we want to do this part first. So, again, I'm going to speed up the camera so you guys can see me creating this texture. creates the starting of our grass texture. Now, as I mentioned, it does leave some little white spaces showing and we want to deal with that. So, question for you. What is underneath the grass? That's right. Dirt is underneath the grass. And what, what color is dirt a lot of the times? That's right. It's very often is the dirt brown. So, what we want to do with this brown is take it and very, very gently, I'm not going to press down hard here, I'm just going to very, very, very gently go over the top of that green, and that brown will fill in all those white spots that I have on my page, and it'll make it look like there's some dirt underneath our grass. So I'm going to go ahead and finish that out real quick. So that finishes out our grass, our texture, most of the stuff underneath our horizon line. What that leaves us to do are our things that we added and then our sky in the background. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish that out. You guys finish that out. We'll come back together in a few minutes and we'll talk about the finished piece. And here, my friends, is the finished snail. We have our lines, we have our shapes, we have our colors, we have our textures, we have our emphasis in the middle, big and large. We have our movement created by our slime trail. We have our pattern on the snail's shell. This, my friends, is a finished work of art. Hope you've enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. As always, happy art and friends.